Hi everyone, so this is lesson two of the second forces part, all to do with connected particles. So this time we've got friction. So remember our, our F max, which is mu r, so we'll definitely need to resolve perpendicular to the plane. So it says, in the diagram, the stream passes over a smooth pulley. The coefficient of friction between the surface and the block is 0.15. So mu is 0.15. So we know that mu is 0.15. The blocks are released from rest. Find the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the string. Right, then, so let's have a look. So I've got I've got 5g acting down and I've got r acting up, the normal reaction to the slope. If I'm assuming that the 2 kilogram mass is going to pull it down, my direction of travel is that way from the acceleration. So my friction, I'm going to put F max here. I know we've got FR to be honest. My friction's going that way, my tension's going that way. For 2G mass, it's freely, freely suspended, so I've got the 2G acting down, the T acting up, and the acceleration is going that way. Right, so all we do, same as last time, I'm going to set up equations, but I need to find out what R is so I can work out what F max is to help me. So if I do perpendicular, F equals MA. So up minus down is equal to zero on the five kilo mass. Because it's not bouncing, it's not plowing through the thing. So R minus 5G is zero, so R is 5G. So I can use this for the friction now. So F max is mu R. So F max is. 0.15 times 5g. The pack says that that's 0.75g, uh, which will keep it as that for now, because it's exact, isn't it? And g is 9.81 as well. So I've got my f max now. Right, so let's have a look at each mass independently then. So the 5kg mass, parallel. So I'm going to do f equals ma. So the force in the direction of travel. Minus a force opposing it is a mass times acceleration. So the only force pulling it is the tension. The F max is opposing it, which is 0.75g, and that's equal to a mass of 5 times by acceleration. So if I, do, uh, if I do a slight rearrange, I've got T minus 5a is equal to 0.75g. So I'm setting up simultaneous equations now to make this work. So let's have a look at the 2 kilogram mass now. So a 2 kilogram mass is forming. So I'm going to do F equals MA. It's the force in the direction of travel minus the force opposing is equal to mass times acceleration. So that's 2G minus tension is equal to 2A. So rearrange it for the same. So T plus 2A is equal to 2G, where G is 9.81. If you solve them simultaneously, so 1 minus 5 and 0 0.75 times 9.81, and then 1, 2, and 2 times 9.81, it gives me a tension of 16.1 newtons to 3 sig fig, and an acceleration of 1.75 meters per second squared to 3 sig fig. Job done. That's nice, isn't it? How nice is that? Let's we'll stop there, or should I keep on going with example two? I think I'll do example two. So example two says two particles, P and Q, masses five and three, connected by a light and extensible plane. Particle P is pulled by a horizontal force of magnitude 40 newtons. Uh, along the rough plane, the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2. The string is taut, the energy is gone. Right, let's draw a picture then. So I've got P here, which is 5G, with a normal reaction for P there. It's being pulled by 40 newtons. It's got F max holding it back. Then there's a string, so there's tension in the string, and then there's Q. So it's almost like a, um, a car in a caravan, isn't it? They don't like a car in trailer thing. So 3G, I've got R for Q. Careful saying that, and then F max. Right then. Okay. So very quickly then, let's work out the R values, then we can work out the friction, 
then we can work out the f maxes because each x max f max is different. Right, so let's have a look at q. So q for q. So if I go perpendicular, f equals m a. So I've got up minus down is zero. So r q oops, minus three g is equal to zero. So r for q is three g. Then let's look at f max. So that's mu r for q. And we said mu was what was mu? Not point two. So f max for q, for q is 0 0.2 times by 3g, so that's 0 0.6, 0 0.6g. So this one's for, for q. If I look at p now, same idea, up minus down is equal to zero. So our p minus 5g is equal to zero, so r for p is 5g. F max for P is mu R, so F max is 0 0.2 times by 5, so that's just going to be G, isn't it? So that's for Q. Right, then, so got that. So now let's have a look. Whew. Let's have a look at the whole system then now. Let's do it all in one go. So if you imagine for the whole system, I've got 40 newtons going that way. I've got 8g acting down. So I'm going to work out the acceleration. And then I've got this total f max, which would be 0.6g uh, plus 0 .0, plus 1g. So it's going to be 1.6g. Are you happy with that? So I've added the 0 0.6 and the 1g together. Right, so let's do f equals, f equals m8. So I've got 40 newtons minus 1.6g is 8 lots of eight. So if I do 40 minus 1.6g over 8, that gives me an acceleration of 3.04 meters per second squared. G was, what's G? G's 9.8, so 3.0 meters per second squared. 263 is my acceleration. So that's the acceleration done. Part B says find the tension. So if I just choose one of them, it doesn't matter which one I do. So for part B for the tension, I'm just going to choose one. So if I do Q, because it's got less going on, then for F equals MA, the force in the direction of travel is my tension. The F max is there, isn't it? It's not 0.6G. And that's equal to a mass of 3 times by an acceleration of 3.04. So T is 3 times 3.04. Add on 0.6g, so that gives me a tension of roughly 15 newtons to 263. That'd be okay. I've not gone too fast with that, have I? I hope not. So I've chose Q because it was easy. I can choose P. If I'm accurate, I get exactly the same answers. So explain how the modeling assumptions that the string is light and inextensible have been used. Right then, so if the if the string is light and inextensible, they both move at the same time, at the same speed, at the same acceleration. So they, for the, the paxis, the tension is the same throughout. The string. So masses accelerate at the same rate. So accelerate. Also, the mass of the string is negligible. Mass of string negligible. Negligible. There. Which is a massive assumption. Um, when I did my masters, it was all to do with like fluids and stuff. And what we're doing, like F equals MA, but it's things like big, big tug belts pulling, um, pulling kind of petrol tankers and stuff. And that you actually need the mass in the, the string because it's that that actually pulls it because there's a big weight on it. And it kind of drops into the water and pulls the boat and then lifts it back up again. Anyway, there you go. So in real life, we're going to need it, but never mind. Right, bye bye.